the voting process been like for Ethiopians? So on the one hand, this was the first, you know, this this first free vote, um, but the extent to which it was actually free has been debated because there was an opposition boycott. Um, there were ir irregularities in some areas. So according to the election board, four out of Ethiopia's 10 regions couldn't hold polls. One region went to the polls late. Um, and then the, the, the looming, looming over all of this, right, is that um, the prime minister promised peace and has pursued war. So there are two million people um, in the Tigray region who, who uh, to which the prime minister sent troops last year, who have just been displaced. displaced. Um, so while he is expected to hold on to power, in part because those who are opposed to him do not take part in the vote, um, I, the idea that this is like a smooth step on the road to a peaceful democracy, I, 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 if we believe that, I think we should all be disabused of that notion. Hmm. Ravi, were there, were there observers of this election? What did they have to say? Make a left turn, well, then um, make the a right turn on Grand that, Road. Um, were, were not great in that, you know, much of this election has just been marred by controversy. Uh, you know, many of the opposition leaders have boycotted the election over claims of intimidation. Um, millions of Ethiopians were unable to participate in the vote. you know, right the, uh, the current leader, Abe, um, has rejected any calls from Washington um, for a ceasefire in the ongoing fighting in the Tigray region. And, you know, to step back a little bit amid all of this, we have what seems to be uh, a Using famine, the right lane, make a uh, right turn on East Red Bridge Road, and then merge left one lane. At least 350,000 people there experiencing famine. 5.5 uh, million uh, uh, people in that region are facing food insecurity. That's about 80% of Tigray's population. Um, and amid all of this, of course, we have, uh, you know, a conflict in that region with mass killings of civilians. Uh, Tigrayans bearing uh, most of the brunt of, of, of those attacks. Um, so all in all, these are the worst possible conditions. In a quarter uh, mile, make a left turn election. toward U.S. Uh, Highway and, 71 you know, North, using the upcoming the left two lanes. The community will see them as deeply flawed, especially given that this is a country um, which has a leader who is the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. Mm. Well, Indira, Emily alluded uh, to the violence we've been seeing, and earlier this week, at least 64 people were kill killed in an airstrike by the government. What was the reasoning behind the airstrike, and can you talk about the timing? Sure. I mean, it is, um, it, it's really troubling that this airstrike happened, killing dozens of people in Tigray. Um, at least 30 people were dead when this airstrike hit a busy marketplace. And, you know, this is one of the worst Using attacks the left two in lanes, the last make a left turn months. toward U.S. Um, as Ravi Highway was 71 saying, North. this conflict has been toward US. Famine. Highway 71 North. millions of people to flee. Um, we have a wonderful really disturbing piece about this on our natgeo.com website by the really well-known photographer Lindsay Adario and she quoted someone who said I never saw hell before but now I have the situation is terrible and for listeners who may not be familiar um, Tigrayans are considered are an ethnic minority in Ethiopia and um, you know since this current prime minister came to power there's been a split they have not um, um, lined up with him, but there's the whole question of whether there is a genocide going on. And one thing that I find incredibly troubling is the Prime in Minister one, Abiy Ahmed is US. someone who in Highway 2018, North. Um, you know, was uh, so many people held so much hope for him. He got a Nobel Prize after, you know, being this shining hope for his country, undertaking all these ambitious reforms, freeing political prisoners, welcoming exiles back from home, and most importantly, striking this really important peace deal with Eritrea, Ethiopia's neighbor and old foe. So he was hailed and now just, you know, two or three years later, um, the Highway view of him internationally North has really changed. Um, this former intelligence officer now seems to have his government targeting Tigrayans. His forces have been accused of engaging in massacres, sexual assault, ethnic cleansing. And of course, you know, if this famine is what UN officials are saying, it Using would be the, the three worst lanes, in the world since US. a quarter Highway of a million people died North. in Somalia a decade ago. So it's incredibly worrying um, what's happening. 
and it's also you know unclear whether the the balloting that's going on now is free and fair in a half mile oh, Emily, with, with all US, of the uncertainty you've laid out the what does that mean for the lanes. path ahead yeah i mean unfortunately i feel like this is kind of my nicaragua answer right but i don't i, I don't think we know we know that the same person who uh, whom Indira just described as having caused all of this violence and or who at least perpetuated all of this violence and, and chaos and uncertainty is going to remain in charge. Um, Using the left two lanes also keep left onto Nicaragua, US. I think, unfortunately, Highway 71 North. You know, while it's not as though this has gotten no international attention, we're talking about it right now, um, the reality is that this is not the priority of, of many of many countries um, which are consumed with the global pandemic and with the rise of China and with Russia. Um, and so I think we can expect more, more violence in Ethiopia. Well, let's turn now to the Black Sea and a maritime dispute that's put Russia's relationship with the UK on edge. The British government says it's prepared to send vessels from its navy through disputed waters near Crimea again after a confrontation between one of its warships and Russian forces. The BBC North. reporter Jonathan Beale was on board HMS Defender as the clashes played out. It said it was going through a recognized international shipping lane, but while it was carrying at this time, that there is, that is another Russian aircraft fucking the warship here in the Black Sea. Robbie, do we know what happened? <laughs> well, the, the strange thing is that uh, it seems like Russia and the United Kingdom are disagreeing on what exactly happened. Um, but we have uh, a reporter who was there, and you just heard some sound from, from Jonathan Beale of the BBC. So actually, yes, we do have a good sense of what happened. In one mile, uh, keep left that, onto uh, US. The, the, the British warship more. HMS Defender was in what it says is international waters uh, off of the coast of the Crimean Peninsula. Um, but Russia says that those waters, of course, uh, are controlled by, by Moscow because it annexed Crimea in 2014. Uh, the, the Brits say that, uh, as, as you just heard, there were sort of, uh, Russian sort of jets, fighter jets flying above. Shots were fired, uh, not at the HMS Defender, but sort of in its relative direction or nearby. So there was no danger, but shots were fired. Uh, and we hear those in that report from uh, from Jonathan Beale. Russia says no shots were fired. So uh, disagreements, uh, a bit of sort of silliness as well, but, but a very serious uh, uh, incident uh, that highlights how, on the one hand, Russia uh, sees Crimea as its territory and the mile, waters around it as its, but of course the West of US. Highway it's the Friday News North. Roundup. We're with Ravi Agrawal, Editor-in-Chief of Foreign Policy. Also with us, Emily Tampkin, the U.S. Editor of the New Statesman, and Indira Lakshmanan, Senior Executive Editor at National Geographic. Uh, I'm curious, Indira, when you, when you hear that audio from the BBC and you think about Russia's current relations with, with many nations ar around the world, what do you make of this incident? Well, it's not great, but it's also not surprising. I mean, I think it's interesting from an In international mile, point of view that Britain Bruce decided to sail so US. close to the Highway coast of Crimea. Um, it was trying, to supposedly, lanes. to quietly demonstrate that these waters legally belong to Ukraine, even though Russia annexed um, Crimea seven years ago. Of course, the international community has never recognized that. Um, you know, it's not surprising that Russia reacted as it did, because for seven years, even though the United States, the UK, the EU in general have imposed all sorts of sanctions, it's not as if anyone has done anything stronger than sanction Russia over Using Crimea. The lanes, so I think they've sort of considered it theirs. I mean, US. we saw Highway not so long ago North. that meeting between um, President Biden and Vladimir Putin in which Vladimir Putin had his arms crossed, looked annoyed. Biden spoke out and said, essentially, we're not going to take it anymore. I came to say what I was going to say. So I think this is a sign of, you know, the U.S. and its closest ally, the U.K., um, trying to stand up to Russia and Russia saying not so fast. Well, I want to stay with Russia for just a moment longer. Emily, I'm told you know a lot about the BARD program. Explain what it is and why it's been banned by Moscow. So the BARD program, it's BARD Smolny. It's an international 
program or an American study abroad program slash part of St. Petersburg State University um, in St. Petersburg as, as the name suggests. Um, it was just declared undesirable by Russia. This is significant uh, geopolitically and, and significant, if, if your listeners will forgive me for me personally, uh, 